Hello, welcome back to the channel. And as you can see, today we're playing Robocod 2 on the Atari ST. So this was released in 1991 by Millennium, and is of course the follow-up to the first Robocod game. So I think both the first games are fairly well thought of. Not sure about the later ones. So this was released on quite a few platforms. And yeah, I quite like this game when I uh, when it came out. I played it quite a bit. So the main gimmick is that Robocod can extend his neck and he can also bounce on enemies. Unfortunately, jump is up. Anyway, so you can crawl across the scenes like this. So guess where the platform is, which isn't great. Now I can remember there are levels where you can have a plane and fly, a, fly across not sure if there's any other things like that. So of course left to right some verticality, verticality on some levels. A little bit of momentum on the movement. I'm not sure if there's actually any sound effects. I mean as much as I like the music whoops, it can get a bit repetitive. I think there's a different tune for most levels. There's nice jointy little movements there when you're not doing anything, it's great. Now, oops, as you can see we've got energy oops, energy and lives. Just remember up to jump, not fire. So don't know where these blocks come from, where the idea was from. <laughs> and obviously, oops, a lot of inspiration from Mario. This a blind jump. Oh, we actually have to jump. Oh, sent an enemy out. Excellent. Now this is sort of quite infamous for uh, the penguin advertisements in this game. The penguin biscuit. At least you'll be familiar with if you're in the UK. There we go. And here we are. It's a penguin. Here's the exit. I'm not sure if there's a secret in this level. I think there are secrets in some of the levels. Some levels it's quite quick to get to the ex exit. Oh, no, same music. There's definitely different music on some levels. But... Oops, let's not go down there. Now, I would say don't try and play this with an analogue stick, because it does funny things. And it's quite hard to play, to say the least. I do like some of the enemies in this game as well, they're quite inventive and nice. But as you can see, the one bad thing, well, depending on your taste, is a, the scrolling's a little bit juddery. Certainly other versions, it's... well. Certainly on the Mega Drive version I have, it's better. And so of course, sort of the nearest thing to a Christmas game I can find at the minute which is actually any good. Surprising lack of them on the 8-bit and 16-bits, which I haven't done before. Oh, so poison. More poison, thank you. We have a bus. Can we probably near the end? Yep. Is there anything up here? Yep. Ah, here we are. So, the, as I say, there are some power ups in the game. Again, like the buttons in Mario. open certain things. Okay, can we get out? It's sort of like a hub world at the beginning. But I don't think I can go back to it without dying. Let's die. It's 
So it's quite generous with the lives and en energy. Uh, I think this might be the plane level. You have to fly to get up there. Come on. Oh dear. <laughs> there we go. Right. No, I don't want to continue. Thank you. Let's go to the other door in sort of the little hub world there is at the beginning. I do like these little scenes. They are nice. Okay. So we went in there. No! Okay. So I think that's basically like a world, those levels. So this door is another one, maybe? Yeah. So, we've got some different music. I think it's another set of levels. So. Let's see if I can just get up here. Okay, not quite a blind jump, thankfully. So, where are we going? There we go. Okay, let's leave it there anyway. So, is it worth playing today? Yeah, I think so. I do love the little cutscenes, it's very cute. But it's just that scrolling which is a bit off, and which you might make you better off playing the other versions. Or at least the Mega Drive version which I've played. Anyway, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.